well the state of california is not yet changing its name to the state of people's california and it's not building a wall to keep people in so that was of course a clickbait and uh, this video is not about california however you know it's not video about the only correct path to what's better tomorrow because I do stay away from ideologies and religions and I do it religiously this video is about survival this video is a must watch video for people with permanent and semi-permanent conditions or who have family members with permanent and semi-permanent conditions for which they have been prescribed medication they have to take every day what will you do in the case of emergency when you cannot get the medication what will you do what will happen with you if you cannot get the medication if the pharmacies are not available if there was some kind of catastrophe whether it's a flood or a it's you know a nuclear attack or chemical attack or any attack where you have to stay weeks indoors just to survive it's very important what will you do will you just die because you do not have medication or do you want to live if you want to live and if you want your family members to live in a case of emergency when you have no choice but to shelter in place you should do what I'm about to do you should write to your senator to your representative at the federal and at the state level you should also write to the pharma pharmacological companies pharmaceutical companies and you should ask them to develop a long expiration date medications for people with permanent and semi-permanent conditions for example amongst other things i do suffer from high blood pressure for which i take medication what happens when i cannot get any more medication what happens to me my odds of getting a heart attack stroke or some other issue increase so it's very important you know we do not think about emergency until emergency is on top of us and one more thing you should ask your political leaders and your civic leaders to do for you is that you know for the next emergency we are ready because uh, you know the biggest complaint is that there was not enough PPE for this emergency what about the next emergency will we have enough PPE for the next emergency and what about people in the nursery homes what about them what about visitation I think they should be you know part of patients and family and friends of patient bill of rights for the people in nursery homes when the PPE should be provided at least once a month the PPE should be provided by the nursing home to a family member or a friend even during shelter in place you know order within a state or a nation you know they they should be law which says that that per, the, they must provide proper protection proper gear for at least one person to visit for at least an hour a month with a family member or a friend in a nursing home those people should not die alone and you know what happened in the nursing homes is terrible the death rate is terrible now something has to be done about this because I'm not getting younger and I'm thinking about myself you know you need friends you need friends you never know who's gonna take care of you when you're old most especially if you have no kids and even if you do have kids that's why you know my idea of dealing with uh, being alone is not to be alone create something I would call it's kind of you know you can say I'm a chauvinistic male but that's the first word word that comes to my mind is camaraderie 
you know, a group of uh, men and women who simply practice. They actually practice if somebody gets institutionalized. They practice. Doesn't matter what they did. Doesn't matter how they got institutionalized, whether they're temporarily at the hospital, whether they're semi-permanently, permanently, whether they got jailed or whatever else, or nursery home. Doesn't matter. Nursing, nursing home. It doesn't matter what happened to them. It only matters that you know they have friends. And the way you practice, for example, you designate one person as being put, let's say, in an institution. Doesn't matter which institution. And then, you know, other members of the group have to write for that month that that person is designated as the person being institutionalized. Once a week, they have to write them a letter. And once a month, each member has to meet with them for 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be at their home. It can be, you know, but they have to know their address and their phone number. But they have to, but they have to meet at least once a month for at least 15 minutes. It may be at the local Dunkin' Donuts for all I care. But they have to meet together. And in this way, you know, you are not left alone when you get old, even if you do not have kids, even if you do not have family in, in the country where you live. Whichever country you live in, it's not just for the United States. So it's important. You know what happened? I don't know who's guilty, who's not guilty, what happened, but it doesn't make sense to me. It absolutely doesn't make sense to me that so many people died in the nursing homes. It just doesn't make sense because they were extra beds, a lot of extra beds in a field hospital built by the military in New York City. Why were those people concentrated at nursing homes, concentrated at nursing homes, you know, when you're supposed to stand six feet apart and you concentrate sick people with COVID-19 at nursing homes, instead of, for example, sending them to the, many of them could have been sent to the field hospital in New York City. Why not? Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody was trying to save social security. I don't know. Getting rid of the old people. Who knows? I don't have an answer. Somebody should investigate it. Not to punish anybody, not to point finger at anybody, just so it doesn't happen again. So, you know, you can always open investigation. Inquiry. That's what it is. For example, there's a difference, in a, like in a military, there is a difference between court martial and inquiry. Court martial is when somebody is guilty of something and you can even criminally charge them and put them in jail, put them in a stockade. But inquiry, that would be to find facts and give some, come up with some solutions, come up with some advice so it doesn't repeat itself in the future. That would be, you know, quite good that, that if it happened. And don't get me wrong, I don't have political agenda. I don't have political views. I mean, I have political views, but I do stay away, as I said previously. You know, I stay away from ideologies and I stay away from uh, religions. So, you know, and I do believe, you know, in a uh, greener earth. I believe in growing of the forests. I believe in, uh, you know, making things more organic. Doesn't mean I always eat organic food. I believe in those things. You know, so I even made a joke song, you know, probably a very corny song, but nevertheless. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Fracking methane, boom, life was but a dream. Who cares, you know? Who cares? But I care. We should care about our environment being cleaner, but being really cleaner, not being BS cleaner. What do I mean? You know, glaciers are mount melting in the mountains and already California is suffering and other states are going to start suffering. And about 2050, half the U.S. states are going to have problem with getting fresh water. 
but you know, flush me three times, toilet tank hasn't resolved this issue. Also, reality check people. The only way you can save that water is to prevent two things. You have to prevent two things. You have to prevent it from flowing into the ocean and you have to prevent it from evaporating. Part of the reason why I love New Jersey, because in New Jersey, we do not get water from the mountains. If anything, we're going to have too much fresh water in New Jersey, but we're not going to run out of water. That's why I don't want to move out from New Jersey. And yes, some coastline going to be getting flooded so much. Not even that it's going to disappear under water. It's just going to be getting flooded so much that people are eventually going to have to be evacuated from that area. But for the major part, we're going to be fine. We're going to have fresh water to drink. And, you know, as long as there is no any major nuclear conflict, we should be good. We should be sitting pretty. So I do like New Jersey. So anyway, now think about it. Think about what I said calmly. And, you know, put it in the comments what you think about what I said. Because I believe that people with permanent conditions, people, you know, with semi-permanent conditions should be allowed and the pharmaceutical companies should develop medication that has long expiration date. And people with those conditions should be allowed at the very least, at least one month emergency package packed in seven day increments, let's say 28 days. That's people with semi-permanent conditions and people with permanent conditions at least eight weeks packed in seven day increments. So that would be really nice. That would be something that would help people in case of emergency. Because right now, majority of us, in a case of real emergency, we are likely to perish. So we need to change it. And another thing we can do to change it is to, uh, you know, build more modular reactors, small modular reactors that are cooled with liquid salts. And they also should be properly protected against any natural, natural or man-made disaster. But that's pretty much it. And click up and subscribe and thank you and have a good day.